Number 50. A kangaroo can jump over an object 2.5 meters high. A. Calculate its vertical speed when it leaves the ground. All right, so let's draw a little picture here. Um, there is no chance I'm drawing a kangaroo. So for some reason, the box will represent a kangaroo. And it's going to jump now over an object that is 2.5 meters high. So let's just say this little object here. All right, this thing is uh, 2.5 meters high. So 2.50 meters. Okay, so the kangaroo is going to jump. It's going to go hip hop, hippity hop hop, right over the right over this thing and come back down. Okay. Now let's assume that it just clears the uh, height of this object. All right, so it jumps exactly 2.5 meters. You might say, well, it might have to jump slightly more. Yeah, but to, we're going to simplify it. So uh, let's just keep it at 2.50. And now what it wants us to do, it wants us to calculate the kangaroo's vertical speed. All right, when it leaves the ground, so it wants to know essentially the initial velocity here. Now, framing in this problem is extremely important, okay? Um, I'm gonna break this up into two frames, okay? I've done this before in the past, so those of you who have been tuning in should be familiar, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the highest point as the point in which I'm gonna divide this problem up into the two parts. To the left of the point will be part A, to the right of the point will be part B, and this point here is special. Reason being is because not only is it the highest point of the problem, but it's also where the velocity of the object is equal to zero. All right, now that's important because in terms of part A, if I consider this to be the initial state, this would then be considered the final state. So I would then know the final velocity for part A, okay? If I consider my part B as, as the frame I'm interested in, then this particular point becomes now the initial value because now at the bottom, it's the final, okay? So it tells me another piece of information that's extremely important. So let's see. So what do we know now specifically for part A? Okay, because remember, there, it's asking us to find the initial velocity when it leaves the ground. So that's really what's important. So for part A, all right, for frame A, uh, the initial velocity is something. Don't know what it is. The final velocity, we do know, it's zero meters per second for the reasons I just discussed. We do know that the acceleration here is going to be negative 9.80 meters per second. And we also do know something else, right? How high does uh, Mr. Kangaroo have to jump? Mr. Kangaroo has to jump 2.50 meters to clear it, right? So that's essentially the height um, between from the kangaroo to the top. Okay, so that's the displacement of part A. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, Andrew, you kind of drew the picture. Look, here's the height of the kangaroo, and this is a little lower. Yeah, I know. I guess I was a little sloppy there. But assume that they are at the same height, okay? Because if they're not, um, we don't have enough information in the problem to calculate it. More information would have been given. So I'm fairly confident that that should be the case. So now we do know the displacement here. Since, he's, since Mr. Kangaroo is jumping in the positive, or he's propelling himself in the positive y direction, we know that that displacement is a positive value. So it's just going to be 2.50 meters. All right. Now let's take a look. Do we know an equation that relates these four variables together? Yes. Equation number four. So, wonderful. I can literally use equation number four to calculate my answer. So... The final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. Final velocity is zero. Initial velocity is what we're looking for. The acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.80, and the displacement we just discussed was 2.5. So now we get the initial velocity squared it's minus, so just do the math, so two times negative 9.8 times 2.5, and we'll get an answer of negative uh, 49.0. Okay, now add that on over. Zero, add it on over. 49.0. Now the initial velocity then squared is now 49.0. So how do we solve? Got to get rid of the square, so we got to take square root. So the initial velocity here of part A is 7 meters per second. Three significant figures. So that solves part A. That's all that there is to part A. Not only part A of the problem, by the way, but also frame A.
Okay. Let's take a look at now part B. It says, how long is it? Oh, don't call it Mr. Kangaroo. How long is Mr. Kangaroo in the air? Well, uh, we can do this in, uh, in a couple of ways. We can think of about this problem as still two parts, right? I could solve, um, I could solve for the time it takes for frame A, meaning the time it takes to get from the bottom to the top, and then realize that there's symmetry, and therefore the time of part A should be the same as time, the time of part B. So I would just add them, right? I could do that, that's fine. Um, that's one way. Another way would be, since the problem is symmetrical, you can use another formula to, uh, to help you out. Um, what we could use here, so which one might we use? And this, this formula will help connect the frames. Remember, uh, we are trying to look for uh, time here in this problem. So which one, which one are you thinking? Take your time. Remember, also, we know something else, right? If we consider that, if we know the initial velocity of part A, right now, so consider the problem to be this. Kangaroo jumps up comes back down, okay? It leaves with an initial velocity of, we just calculated 7.00 meters per second, right? It travels a height of 2.50. And if now I consider this whole thing to be my problem from the start point over here to the end point over here, I actually do know the final velocity in this location. Because it's symmetrical, it has to be the same, all right, as it was initially just negative. So that might make it even easier now, right? So we know, uh, so we know that. Now remember, if I'm considering this to be my starting point and this point to be my ending point, what's the displacement? Is it 2.50? No, right? It won't be, it'll be zero. Why? Well, look at the start and the end point. Are they at different heights? No, so therefore, no displacement. Cool. All right, let's move on. So now we know the initial, we know the final, we also know the displacement is zero. Okay, so that can help us. So the X here is gonna be zero meters. We also know that the acceleration, right, is negative 9.80 meters per second. So we wanna find then the time, okay? So maybe Choose an equation that relates initial, final, ex and acceleration, and time. Equation number one fits the bill at the top. So the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. So the final velocity here is negative 7.00 meters per second. The initial velocity is 7.00 meters per second plus the acceleration, which was negative 9.80 t. Okay, great. So it looks like to solve this, I gotta subtract the 7.00. Notice how it'll be additive. So negative 14, right, point zero is equal to negative 9.80 T. So now divide out the negative 9.80 and look, the signs worked out beautifully because we get a positive time, which we should have. So now it becomes negative 14 divided by 9.8. By negative 9.8 that is, right? So it'd be positive 1.43 seconds. And that how long that is how long Mr. Kangaroo is in the air. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Hope you learned something. And uh, please remember to subscribe if you did. Thank you so much.